Australian Catholic University graduation. Graduates proudly wore their mitre boards. Why do I doubt that that journalist was a graduate? Good evening. Our critics, yes there are some, accuse us of devoting too much attention to the trivial mistakes of newspapers. Well, tonight, that's all we've got. Turn off now, Professor. Let's start with the Yarra Rangers trader, which likes to put the record straight. Unhappily, it's under this heading. Erratum. Nice sentiment. The South Sydney Bulletin quotes its own editor as speaking grandly of... A sacred tenant of Australia's freedom of speech. Or does he mean freedom of spinach? The Age's computer page probably got it right when it referred to... Computer giant Hewlett Packard's own Australian Nerd Centre. Disarmingly frank. Still with the Age, a rundown of the Kennett Cabinet, wherein one minister is a... Former veterinary officer. And the word parliamentary is variously spelt... Parliamentary. Again. Parliamentary. Then... Parliamentary. But best of all is the assertion that Jeff himself... Founded KNF Advertising. No wonder he hates them. Heather de Groot in the Courier Mail told us of a fire driving people... From the boudoirs of their den of inequity. It's so unfair. Kelly Burke produced something similar for the Sydney Morning Herald. A few expatriots. Quislings. In the same paper, a film review written by Mrs Malaprop. Fear and the antisocial behaviour it elicits. Still in the Fairfax Herald and Michael Cockrell comes up with... Uncharted waters. And yet another from the SMH in which Robert Wainwright described an enviable property as... One of the most envious locations in Sydney. I haven't finished with you lot yet. Next time, try Moan. Mowed down at sea. Doug Gorrell, who writes about sport for the Townsville Bulletin, has an admirable grasp of the vernacular. It would have been the upset of the year if they had of been defeated. Much the same in the Murdoch Telegraph. A Labour MP who retired at the election after claiming to have never took part in a debate. You can see why he didn't. The arts pages of the Adelaide Advertiser reported on an old play... ...now believed to have enormous revelance. The Murdoch Herald Sun couldn't make up its mind about the Maasai. It thought they told the truth, the quality of veracity, and were very warlike, the quality of ferocity, so it combined them. Their ferocity. The Coffs Harbour advocate ran an... ...obituary. No doubt a death notice for an astronaut. And the Canberra Times came up with... Separation. A Liberal Party handout revealed a highly specialised recreation. Echo tourism. Another from the age. Agents tow the line. And finally, in this indictment of journalistic spelling, the Telegraph again. Ignorance blamed for clergy abuse. Next, problems with headlines. They're not always what they seem. The Tumut and Adelong Times, despite all appearances, was not reporting the mass murder by a young woman from the high country. Mountain made axes 20. It was about job losses at the cannery. And when the Kangaroo Island paper, The Islander, front paged 90 die in horror smash, the story was that 90 sheep and pigs were killed. Darwin's NT News promised a feature on blood and lust. But it was only about a rodeo. Blood and dust. A special breed. The bleeding obvious from the Tizer. Brothels may be allowed in red light districts. And not so obvious from the Canberra Times. Howard committed to museum. Could be worse. The Townsville Bulletin's on the Rednecks side. Bravery award likely for shooting hero. And from the same paper, one of those redundant tautologies. Nostalgia for the past. The Catholic Life newspaper reports a subterranean place of worship. St. Patrick's Cathedral Parramatta razed to the ground. The Innisfail Advocate. Forgerer denied diplomas. The West Australian, which doesn't make sense. Caught in double probes backflip. No comment on the next one from the news mail at Bundaberg. Motion passed on toilet. When a man who once donned a costume as Fat Cat for street promotions was busted for possession of some green vegetable matter, you could trust the Tizer to make the most of it. Fat Cat Drug Raid. Let's move on to the advertising columns. Sadly, there's a position vacant for a... 
Domestic Violence Development Officer. Do we need it developed any further? Here's one seeking work. A dangerous tree expert. No thanks, we prefer the safe ones. Refreshing truth in a used car advert. Workshop tested and won't last the weekend. Next one's from the Canberra Times where the public servants are getting dusty. Person required to clean small offices. The classifieds in the Toowoomba Chronicle offer... Aged pensioners, $45, delivered. And the Christadelphians have become mercenary. World history revealed by Daniel the Prophet. The Sydney Indonesian paper, Wata Barita Akila, advertises the best of both worlds. Praise and horship. Enough of that. And on to journalistic howlers. Malcolm Holland writing in the Sunday Herald Sun about Hitler's wartime plan. To dismantle the famed Nelson's Column in central London and move it to Berlin. Horatio Nelson, according to Mr Holland, was... The British admiral who defeated the Spanish Armada at Trafalgar in 1805. That's before the French arrived. Rex Jory can match that. He deplores that Australians were bound to the tales of Britain. For example, a well-known British story that... William Tell, whoever he was, shot an apple from his stupid son's head with an arrow. Jory's no dumber than his paper's editorialist who described the antagonists in World War II as... Churchill, Roosevelt, de Gaulle versus Hitler and Stalin. Most impressive. Mark Drummond in the West Australian botches Australian history. Australia's first historic gold rush in 1885. So much for all that trouble in Victoria in the 1850s. Carolyn Cummins of the Fairfax Herald also fails history. Charles Kingsford Smith founded the Queensland and Northern Territory Airline Service. No, he didn't. And that's not the proper name either. Ms Cummings' colleague, Greg Roberts, referred to... Australia's first Labor Prime Minister, Andrew Fisher. Wrong. That honour went to John Watson four years before Fisher. Peter Wilson in the Weekend Australian with a lovely howler that wouldn't please Oliver Stone. Despite the best efforts of filmmaker Oliver North, Nixon's reputation is higher than even in 1972. The age confuses Mandy Rice Davies with Christine Keeler. As Ms Christine Keeler said of another claim at another time, he would, wouldn't he? Jane Joe's advertiser columnist confuses fish with fatwas. Author, Salmon Rushdie. And again in The Age, Don Edgar dimly recalls a bit of J.D. Salinger. Like Holden Crawford of Catcher in the Rye. Collingwood was his name, or was it Caulfield? I regret this howler from the Adelaide Sunday Mail is anonymous. The Jane Austen classic, Jane Eyre. Nearly as good as this effort in the West. Don Quixote with Cleese in the title role and Williams as his sidekick, Pancho Vila. Simon Yeaman in the Tizer. Held in Melbourne, the 120-year-old stall gift is one of the most famous foot races in the world. And the Melbourne Cup is run in stall. Richard Glover, who specialises in domestic trivia in the Fairfax Herald, trots out his show business ignorance. The old Three Stooges baseball routine about who's on first base. Try Abbott and Costello. The Herald Crossword's neo-colonialism showing. The clue? An island of Indonesia. Their answer? Timor. So, their geopolitics stinks, they can't spell, and their general knowledge is woeful. What about journalists' numeracy? Much the same. Tim Hilferty in the telly. Rain was falling at the rate of 150 millimetres an hour. Which means if this rate continued for one hour, 150 millimetres of rain would fall. At least. Kelvin Bissett, same paper. The flag fall will increase from $2 to $3. A 33% rise. If not more. The Tizer reckons... A typical Southeast woman can expect to bear 2.455 children. However unsatisfactory she may find it. The Geelong Independent reporting on a fishing contest... 900 fish were reeled in, ranging from a 20-gram flathead to a 162-kilometre blue shark. The Griffith Area News confirms that kilometres are a measure of weight. A plan to import 750 kilometres of cannabis to Australia. So much for number skills. This next group bespeak problems with quality control. The Herald Sun tells us a policeman... ...urged people not to mix alcohol and drinking. While the Sunday Examiner promises cats will be seriously out of pocket if they stray. A cat 
found at large or in council-designated cat-free areas will be fined $100 on the first conviction. And the Launceston Examiner on the same subject taking it too seriously. Thousands of Tasmanian pet cats could be executed. Mike Coward writing about cricket in the weekend Oz with a paradox. For clearly complex reasons not yet fully apparent. The Sunshine Coast Daily didn't have a photo of beef eaters to illustrate this caption. Beef eaters. The panic over mad cow disease has struck at the heart of English dining. So what did they use? Guards. And the Canberra Times has lost all its old pictures of Bob Menzies. So for this caption... Former Prime Minister Robert Menzies was behind Canberra's development. They used a snowman. The eyebrows were about right, though. Lisa Olson of the Fairfax Herald says she's seen people... Quaffing canapes. But I doubt it. Robert Luzetich should have studied English. When he died of brain cancer last week, aged 44, Sampras was too devastated to speak publicly. The North Shore Times reckons that old joke is true. People have been charged with... Stealing and climbing the Harbour Bridge. Bill Harcourt wrote for the Ballarat Courier about... The daughter of a Brazilian mining magnate who died in childbirth. And Jonathan Chancellor, publicist to disgraced property developers, reported that a woman made $20,000... When Tim Goodman auctioned her contents. Finally, the rude bits. The Wyala News runs an explanation of cricket's leg-before-wicket rule. The point of impact is in a straight line between wicket and wicket, even if above the level of the balls. The pictorial editor at the Wagga Daily Advertiser didn't look closely enough at this picture. The Northern Rivers Echo's gig guide featured... Guy Leach plus swimsuit slags. And the Herald Sun runs a correction. The owner of a South Yarra furniture store, Philip Hartog, has pointed out that the shop's name is Tongue and Groove, not Tongue in Groove, as reported in the Herald Sun last week. Next week, back to the serious stuff. Good night, dear.